symmetry about the origin. Okay, now here are your choices, boys and girls. You can draw it, which that's going to be a pain in the butt, I'll just tell you right now, but you can draw it if you want and see, is it symmetric about the origin? Or you can go back to the video you were all supposed to watch in which the tests of symmetry were discussed. Hmm. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The tests of symmetry? Listed them. There are four. And I went through those tests. For us, we need to test for the origin. That's the only one we care about because the question is odd. Who remembers the test for symmetry about the origin? Switch signs on both. So we would make this negative y squared, four times negative x squared minus three. Right? If you haven't watched that yet, sometime between now and Tuesday, find the time to watch it. If you've got time to watch, what, race car or whatever that show is you're talking about, hot rod or whatever it was. <laughs> You have time to watch this wonderful video. All right, so I changed the sign on both of them. Uh, so what happened? I get um, y squared, 4x squared minus 3, because don't the negatives square out in both cases? Now notice, look at what, I, I switched the signs on both variables, and what happened? I ended up with exactly what I started with. When you end up with exactly what you started with after you've done your test, then you have symmetry. So the answer to this question is yes. And why? Because I did my test of symmetry about the origin and we passed. So if it's, so if it's like 6 compared to i? No. If, if, if to have any symmetry, it, what you get has to match the original. Yeah. It's odd because I did the odd test. I changed the signs on both. Other tests you do different things for, right? Watch the video. Each test has its own little thing you do. All right, identify with words or an equation. What is number two? It's the logarithmic. That's your logarithmic function. That is your logarithmic function. So you would either write logarithmic function or what equation? Y equals ln x. Y equals ln x. That's your logarithmic function. <coughs> Number three, name a BFF with end behavior that's this. Now look at it, kids. What does this mean? What does the top one mean? As x goes to the right, positive infinity, x goes to the right, what is the function doing? Going up. going up. So here we're going up. As we go right, we're going up. Now what's the bottom line say? As we go left, we're going up. So give me a BFF that has that kind of behavior. It goes up on both sides. X squared, absolute value. Those are the two ones I can think of right off the top of my head. There might be others. But you see what I mean? X squared and absolute value, both go up on both sides. Now, we had a quiz over this before. Your equation is this, and your job is to find, ass oh, oh, go ahead. find asymptotes and holes. Okay, so I've already started. I factored a two out of the bottom. How does the top factor? Money has the top factor. Um, X uh, minus five plus one. Yep, perfect. And of course, everybody knows X squared minus one is plus one minus one. What happens? Cancel. Cancel, which simply means we're going to have a hole. Not everything is going to have a hole, right? You're only going to have a hole if you can cancel. Where will the hole be? 
where x is negative 1. And why is the whole at x equals negative 1? Because that's the factor that I cancel. Now, how do I get the y coordinate? Plug in negative 1. So plugging in negative and plug it in here. So that gives me negative 6 on the top and 2 times negative 2 on the bottom, which is 3 halves. So I have a whole at negative 1, comma, 3 halves. Abby, you want to move over to the next screen? You OK? All right. All right, how about asymptotes? Look right here. Does this guy have any asymptotes? Where? Yes is the right answer, but let's be more specific. Where are the asymptotes? Horizontal. I have a horizontal at y equals what? One half. One half. You can go back to the beginning if you want to, or you can just look right here. Your horizontal is y equals one half. What are the rules for horizontal asymptotes? If the powers match, you just make that fraction. If the one on the bottom is bigger, zero. the asymptotes at zero. If the one on top is bigger, we'll the power. If the power on top is bigger, then Nine. we don't have one. How about vertical asymptotes? Do we have any verticals? Yeah. Where? Well, x minus one is not an is not an equation. What's the equation for the vertical asymptote? x equals one. Because what happens if you put one into your problem? You get a zero. X cannot be one, and it cannot be is a vertical asymptote. Okay. What's the domain? Oh, we just took a quiz over this, so you know how to get this easy. A, what's your domain? Oh, x is greater than or equal to 3. Your domain is x is greater than or equal to 3. Unless you want to write it as an interval, which is absolutely fantastic, but we don't like that. How about B? What's your domain? x cannot be 0 because you don't want a zero in the bottom. So you can either write x cannot be zero, or you can be really mathematical and say everything from negative infinity to zero or everything from zero to infinity. All right, turn it over. Sketch the cosine. Now, on the test, if you are going to sketch a cosine, I do expect you to use your labels. Okay, I haven't emphasized that up, now, up till now because you had a lot to memorize. But I want you to do your labels. So we went through them on your BFF sheet. So if you've forgotten them, you'll want to go back and study your sheet to get these labels. Did I do my cosine okay? Is that the right shape? What's the domain? All the real numbers. Goes on forever and ever. No grids, no asymptotes, no nothing. How about range? What's your range? Negative one to one. And would that be negative one to one like this, or negative one to one like this? The bracket. The bracket. Absolutely. This is my range right there. That's my range. Uh, we kind of already talked about B before we took the quiz. What does it look like? It's an absolute value patient for B. It's an absolute B value B. And it's turned upside down. Because when you put a negative in front of the function, it turns it upside down. Okay, now I've got some crazy picture drawn here, and I want to know the domain and range. 
note there are arrows on both ends. Okay, that's important. So what's my domain? All, all real numbers. All real numbers. What's my range? Everything from negative two to infinity, and that would be bracketed the negative two, right? Or x is greater than or equal to negative two. Does that make sense to everybody? Now we have also used or talked about the concept of zeros. I could ask, I didn't on here, but I could ask you, what are the zeros? What do I mean by that when I say what are the zeros? Where it crosses the x-axis. So if you had the list of zeros, you would say I have one at negative three, one at about one half, it's kind of hard to tell, and then one at one, two, four. Everybody okay with that vocabulary? Zeros, x-intercepts. What are the intervals on which this is increasing? Now remember, I'm talking about drawing it left to right. Where is my pencil going up? And I'm going left to right, so I'm looking at x values. Which x values, as I go left to right, is my pencil going up? Negative three to negative one. And we never, when we talk about increasing, we don't include those endpoints because at the point negative three, it's where a decrease is meeting an increase, right? So there's, you can't call that point either one. All right, is there any other part of the curve that's increasing from three to infinity? Everybody okay with that? Okay, now we got another sketch. We kind of already talked about this, but we'll go ahead and do it. It's another absolute value. What do we do? Goes right one and up two. Perfect. So you got your nice little V, right one, up two. And then we have another symmetry question. Is this symmetric across the identity line? And we want to test it for symmetry about the identity line, across the identity line. All right, who remembers the test of symmetry for the identity line? Yes, indeed you do. You didn't say it? You just knew it? I don't know what's going on back here. He's right. You switch the X and the Y. So when I do that, I'll have X equals negative Y plus 4. Now what do I need to do? This is what I was talking to Braden about a minute ago. What do I need to do? I need to see if it matches the original. So I'm going to rearrange some things here. This is my switch. So I'm going to move the y over. It says y plus x equals 4. And y equals negative x plus 4. Does that match the original? Yes. So therefore, the answer to the question is yes. And the y is I did the test of symmetry and it worked. Okay. All right. Good, 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 good. Let me put that away now. Don't need that anymore. This one all plastic. Now, before we get out whatever else you want to work on, I think we were in the middle of something last time. I can't remember. So we can pick up there, but I want to get back to the last test. So I want to teach back to you. Now, I do pick these back up, okay? I do recollect these, so do not stick it away. 